Hi, I'm Connie, and I'm going to be doing a very basic pattern of a mustache and transfer the pattern onto a wig block, pin it down, and show you how I tie a hair. And this is the, base, the same pattern that you would do for an eyebrow or a beard or sideburns. And then if you were to do a wig pattern, you would need to wrap a head and then do a very similar method. But this is a very quick and dirty, easy way of doing a mustache pattern. So you're going to take your saran wrap or any kind of thin plastic wrap, tear off a piece, have your Sharpie, or actually you want probably a thinner pen, but this one seems to work pretty well. You're going to put it up to the person's mouth. Make sure that they breathe. Don't cover up the nose, the nose holes. And uh, let's see here, just a little bit. Actually, they can breathe through the mouth because this needs to go up over your nose a little bit. So don't cover your mouth, Deborah. So you have air? Can mm -hmm. you breathe? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're going to make sure it's nice and flat. Just sort of press the saran wrap right up against her face. So it's sticking pretty good. So yes, even though women don't usually have mustaches, she's my only demonstration model. So I'm going to draw a mustache right on Deborah right on the plastic wrap. Now it's important that they sit still throughout this whole process. You don't want your actor moving around. And you're going to go just above the lip line. And there's your standard mustache. It might be off a little bit, but fix that later. Now you draw the direction that you want the hair to go. If you want the hair to go on an angle, then you draw it on an angle like that so that the wig maker knows how you want the hair to lay. Some people want mustaches to go straight down like that. Whichever, whichever you decide to do it. Everyone's different. Thank you, Deborah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's got lipstick on it. So now we're looking at the pattern. It's a little bit off right here, but we can see that's where the center of the lip is. So we're going to match it up with this peak, right about up like that. Now, a really important thing that you're going to need to do before we transfer this onto the head is you need to get a hair sample from the actor. Um, the best thing to do is, well, you're going to take a look at their eyebrows and you're going to take a look at their hair color, and you're usually going to start with um, try and get a hair sample from maybe the very back of their head. That would be best. If you have a, a color ring like this, you can match up to whatever colors you want to get. You can get these color rings at different uh, wig merchants and hair merchants. And then you can choose which colors work best with what her mustache is going to look like along with her hair. So that would be pretty dark. If you want to add some highlights, then you add those. Like this one, she might want to have a mustache that has a little bit red in it. So you, as a highlight, you would put that in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and transfer it onto a head. OK, so you're going to take the pattern, and you're going to put it on a wig block like that. Stretch it out. You take your scotch tape. You want the clear tape, the invisible tape, and you're going to tape it down so it's nice and flat. You're going to also pin the pattern down to the head. So that's on there pretty good. It also prevents the color from what you've drawn on here to going on the lace. That's the main reason why you're putting this tape on here, because you don't want any of this Sharpie pen going onto your lace while you're tying. A lot of people tie and use water. And if you use water, then the ink would definitely blend right through. So now what you're going to do is you're going to pin it down. Actually, I'm going to take a piece of lace, and I'm going to pin this down. Now, considering, I think I'm going to go in this direction. So this has, this piece of lace has different bars. They're going in this angle and in that angle. And that determines how you're going to lay the lace down. So considering I want the bars to go on that side, I'm going to have them going down. They also go on that side. So you take the lace and you pin it down like this. You don't want to pin the lace down too tight, just nice and snug. And you want the pins a bit of a distance away from the line because 
right along here and along here, or I should say probably right along here, they're going to be gluing. So you want to give yourself plenty of lace to pin down so that the makeup artist has enough room to cut the lace and they have plenty of lace to work with. Now this is the same concept that you would use again to make a beard or some sideburns or some eyebrows. And this is something that every makeup artist should know how to do because oftentimes you have a wig maker that lives out of town and you need to mail a pattern to them. So it's good for every makeup artist to know how to do this. So now what we're going to do, move this a little bit on an angle. You take your hair, which is right here. This is the cut end. This is the loose end. So this is the part that's cut from the head. And you pull it out. This is called a drawing card. Take out any excess hair. Now some people like to wet the hair. This is just human hair to tie it in because it makes a tighter knot. So this is your knotting hook. If you can see, it's got a little barb right at the end. And that's what you're going to pull the hair onto. You're going to hold the hair onto that little barb. So you're going to wet the hair. And it just softens the hair and, again, just gives you a tighter knot. So then you take your knotting hook. You might want to get in really close on this one. You're going to go underneath the barb, grab the hair. In this case, I think I have two hairs. Oh, no, I got one hair. Pull it underneath, and there's a hole right in beside there. And what you're going to do is you're going to wrap your needle around here, and you're going to pull it through the hole. And I'll do that again. And that's a knot, and then you tighten your knot afterwards. So it lays flat. Do it again. You put your needle underneath the barb. Oops, I got two there. Grab a hair, pull it underneath the barb, pull it around the needle, and then you're going to pull it through the hole. And you have equal tension going on both your right hand and your left hand because you want it nice and tight. If you pull too much on this side, it's not going to be tight at the knot. So you're pulling it through. And then you take it and you give it a nice little tight pull and it lays flat. And I'll just keep doing that again. Grab a hair, pull it around, and pull it through. And this looks easy, but it's actually not. It's very, very difficult. Pull it underneath. And if you notice, I'm pulling my needle on the side and then pulling it through. If you, hold on a second, if you put your needle going this way, you're going to grab the barb. So that's why I turn it and I tilt it when I'm pulling it through. So again, you go, you go through on the side, put your hair on there, pulling it sideways and up and over, flipping it through the loop and pulling it through. And then you just keep going throughout the whole mustache all the way across. You, you want to keep the same density all the way across the mustache. And then as you get to the top of the hairline, you start doing single hairs. But through the bottom here, you go closer together. This is a little bit further apart than I like. But you do, usually with facial hair and um, beards and oh, with a lot of wigs, you want to do as many single hairs as you can because it looks much softer and much nicer. Again, going through, pulling it up, swinging it around, and going through the hole. And that's it. That's the Italian mustache. Next, I'm going to show you how to punch hair into an appliance. And I'm using John James beading needles size 10. Uh, John James is probably one of the best brands that you could use for punching hair. And the way you make a needle for punching, it's a completely different needle from this. This is a wig making needle, a ventilating needle, or a knotting hook. Everyone's got their own term for it, but that's what that is. This is what a punching needle is going to look like. The needle kind of looks like that. See my fingers, how they're, that's what you're going for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a whole needle to look like that so that you can punch it into the appliance like that. And that's how you get the hairs in there. So I'm going to show you how to cut a needle. First thing you do is you grab a beading needle. The reason you use beading needles is because the eye of the beading needle is much larger than most other needles. And this is a pretty strong needle. 
what you're going to do is first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut off the sharp tip and you're going to do it away from yourself and away from everybody else because you don't want that little tip flying in somebody's eye. That would be bad. Now if you can see it, it's got a hole in the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the top of the needle and then I'm going to pull off the side bar so the needle's going to, I'm going to take the top off of it and it's going to look like that. And then I'm going to knock off this other arm so it'll look like that. Okay, so the first thing I do is I'm going to cut off the top part of that needle. So I have to grab my pliers and you're taking it right on the end there. Did I get it? No, I didn't get it. There you go. See, now the needle looks like that. Then what you do is you put it inside your holder before you pull off the other arm. So I'm going to take this old needle out. I need to make it a little bit shorter for this holder, so I'm just going to go like this and take off, ooh, take off some of the arm. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off that other arm. And the way you do that is you can just take a regular pin like this and you just slide it down right in between those two teeth and then it just snaps it off. So all I did was I just took a, a needle or a pin and I just snapped off right in the center and I took off that other arm. Okay, now what I'm going to do is this needle is a bit raw. It's a bit sharp still because it has that edge that we just took off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to file it down and I'm going to file this tip here so that it looks like this. Right now the tip kind of looks like that. So I'm going to tip, uh, uh, file it down so it looks like that. I'm also going to take this edge right here, which is sticking out like that. You want it to be a little bit smoother. You don't want to take it off completely because you still want to put the hair on it. So I'm going to take my little sanding stone and I'm just going to file it down a little bit. And the reason I'm doing this is because you want the needle to be able to push the hair into the appliance nice and smooth and if you don't have a smooth needle it'll tear up the appliance and then you have a very angry makeup artist. So what I've done is I've flipped the needle over side to side, filing it down to a tip and then I'm taking the front edge there and I'm just going a little bit of filing it down. So it's there but it's much smoother now. So that's not going to catch on any of this material. This is just a fake old Planet of the Apes skin that usually we're given. Um, the mold shop will give us a skin. They usually take off all of these edges and it's seamed and then it's painted and then it's given to us. So then we take the hair, just cut it off here. And you can, this is silicone fluid and it's just in a generic jar. And I just dip my needle in some silicone fluid, sort of lubricates it a little bit. And then you take the hair and you literally push it into the skin. And it lays down flat. Your needle determines the way the hair is going into the skin. If you push your needle going in this way, your hair is going to stick out this way. If you punch your, knee, your hair in going this way along the skin, the hair is going to lie flat. So you're, again, you're going to take the hair and you're going to punch it, push it right into the skin. So it came out the other side, we don't want that. But, so there, you let go and the hair stays. And this is done on many, many appliances. I just did this recently for Tom Cruise for his um, hair appliances on top of his head for Tropic Thunder. And that's it. And you, with a, a beard here, I would start way down at the bottom and then work my way up to the edge. And then, of course, you always make the fr front edge nice and soft. And that's how you punch hair.